Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the NFL Rewind. Today, I'm here with your I'm with your host DJ Stewart, and I'm here with my co-host George Daly, George Daly, and Jack Cohen. Hi, I'm Jack Cohen, and we're going to be talking about the best wide receivers in the NFL. And we actually have a few callers on deck after this segment, so it should be a fun show. Yeah. So personally, I have to go with Stephon Diggs because he has. Alongside him, Gabe Davis, and then he also has Josh Allen throwing lasers to him. Remember when he was on the Minnesota Vikings, the Minneapolis Miracle? He just has great hands, and he has speed coming out of Maryland. I think that he's probably one my personal best wide receiver in the league. Jack? Um, I disagree with you there. Um on Stephon Diggs, I do think he's going to be one of the best. But like you said, he's with Gabe Davis. I think Gabe Davis is going to be a big impact this year. But my top wide receiver this year, I think Tyreek Hill. He's going to settle in with Tua. He's going to learn how to have to share the ball with Mike Isicki, the tight end room, and as well as Jalen Waddle. That's something Tyreek Hill needed to adapt to last season, which he did not do well. He was getting open most of the time, but he was getting a little frustrated when he wasn't getting the ball thrown to him when Jalen Waddle was open when Jalen when Jalen Waddle was open wider. And I think that he's gonna be a key asset and look out for his name in February when they step up on the stage and say offensive player of the year. Well, um I have to disagree with DJ who um I can't say that Stephon Diggs is the best because um, after the, what happened and came out this offseason, he was not being a great team player, and that's what it's all about in the NFL. Um, he was not being a great teammate. He would get angry at Josh Allen, and especially in that playoff game against the Chiefs, the way he stormed off the field slamming his pads. It just shows me more symbols of a guy that a lot of people say – don't like and say that was not a good player. Antonio Brown. I think he has the same tendencies. What did he do at the end of his um, career? He stormed off the field as a buccaneer and took off his pads. If if he's not doing good, he's just going to slam his pads some more. I mean, it's like it's just a reoccurring wheel. It's not going to work. So I have to go with the most underrated wide receiver in the league, Debo Samuel. He catches passes out the backfield and runs them. He is fast. He can hurdle. He's just electric. He has that explosive every team wants. Yeah, sure, he might not have the best quarterback like Jimmy G. But now he's Brock Purdy. He's great. I think that he's going to be the wide receiver of the year. I think he's going for 1,200 yards. All right, all right. Let me disagree with you there. If we were gonna pick somebody like if we were gonna pick somebody like Debo Samuel, I'd just say Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey is the slower version of Debo Samuel. Looks like we have a caller. All right. Hello? Hey guys, how's how's it going? I'm loving your show so far. We're good. How about you? Oh, I'm doing great. I, I do have to say I like your picks. That Debo one's a bit interesting. I think. Debo would maybe get some more love if he stopped running his mouth so much after he lost. And one guy he did lose to this year was A.J. Brown of the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, hear me out. I know it may not be the most popular take, but look at the Eagles before they got A.J. Brown. They were a good team. They, they lost to the Buccaneers in the playoffs two years ago. They bring in A.J. Brown to purchase another weapon in addition to Devontae Smith, and that just takes the team. All right, what's your name and where are you calling from? I Can you call back? Right. Well, we think I I we lost the caller. There are very bad thunderstorms, so maybe he just ran into somewhere where he lost his connection. I agree with that. AJ Brown is a guy we were looking at each other, we're like, oh my God, we forgot him. Because when you think about the Eagles, you think about Hurts. You think about the young stud they have in Devontae Smith. And I mean, I personally think if Brown would have stayed with Tennessee, he may be a little bit better than he is because, like I said, with some other guys, you have to, he's going to have to split the role, just like Tyreek Hill with Jim Waddle. I 
how, agree with that. how you said that A.J. Brown would have done better in Tennessee. How is he going to do better? So you're basically saying that he's going to do better with Ryan Tannehill as his quarterback than Jalen Hurts. Uh, well, I'm not saying that. Malik Willis is garbage. Okay, well, I'm not saying it because of the quarterbacks. I'm saying it because there's nobody else in that Titans room. Okay, let's let's talk about – I know it's not a guy, but, like, there's – how much you want to bet there's a guy named, like, Demetrius Felton, who we've never even heard of, just randomly on their roster fighting for their wide receiver number one spot. They would have A.J. Brown if they didn't trade for him or if they didn't give him off to the Eagles. And I think, sure, I think the Eagles are benefiting from that, but now the Titans are like, all we have is Derrick Henry. So. Well, now that we go back to, say, the 2019 draft and – he could have been on the Seahawks. Remember DK Metcalf. Yep. But I mean, yeah. That's a good debate though. Yeah. I think we had a very great opinion all around. The three of us and the caller. I mean, he had some very good thoughts. Yeah. Well, everybody, we're gonna wrap it up here. Thanks for watching the NFL Rewind and I'm DJ Stewart. I was here with my co host George Daly and Jack Cohen and we'll see y'all next time. <laughs>